And now returning to the studio with more on the ongoing escalations around Gaza, founder and executive director of the Israel Institute for Strategic Studies, Dr. Martin Sherman. Dr. Sherman, thank you so much for coming back. Good to be with you. Okay, so first of all, it's now been confirmed that Iran directly had a hand in ordering the Palestinian Islamic Jihad to launch the initial rockets. Does this change anything about the situation, about maybe how Israel should be responding to this attack? Should we be redirecting elsewhere, our attentions elsewhere, or uh, is the current consistent policy of, you know, whatever comes out of Gaza is Hamas's fault, the, the well, right way to go? Well, of course, whatever comes out of Gaza is Hamas's fault. And I think, at least partially, uh, Naftali Bennett, the, uh, the education minister, and uh, hopefully the, or at least he hopes he will be the next def defense minister, mm -hmm. was, was partially right in what he said. I think the last year of violence on the border in Gaza has proved that Israel doesn't deter, doesn't deter the Hamas, in the sense that it doesn't reduce its will to engage in violence against Israel. And Bennett is right when he says that what we have to do is therefore cripple their ability. Um, well, but if I'm not mistaken, his version of crippling their ability is, you know, carpet bombing the Strip. Well, I think he doesn't go all the way. I mean, he doesn't take his logic to the, the, he doesn't take it to the logical conclusion. Because I think in the last few decades it's been shown that it's very difficult to defeat an enemy just from the air. I think the only example that I can think of was in Serbia, where the whole of NATO bombed Serbia for 90, for 90 days continuously. I, I don't think Israel can do that. I, I, I think that the, the air component is an important component, but I think that we have to get used to the idea that you will have to commit ground troops to take and control the territory whilst you eject uh, Hamas. Uh, there will be casualties, but I think the, the, the fault or the blame for those casualties must be laid squarely at the door of people who, who advocated leaving Gaza in the first place. Because what we're seeing in Gaza is the direct result of leaving Gaza. When we were there before, the, this kind of violence was unthinkable. I don't think anyone would have thought of leaving Gaza if they realized that what was going to emerge is what has emerged today with the uh, rocket capability of covering virtually the whole of Israel, with attack tunnels, with naval forces, uh, with balloons. And I think it's only a matter of time until we see swarms of drones with uh, non-conventional right. loans. So I, I don't think that there's any option other than going in and defeating Hamas. Well, I think it's, well, I think it's very interesting that you kind of mentioned uh, some of the people who maybe said, you know, we have to leave, we have to leave Gaza, you know, who were pro-disengagement, because you actually sent us uh, a few sound bites, and I, I want to play those for you now. אני עוד לא שמעתי טענה מגוחכת כזאת. ההתנתקות טובה לביטחון. הנה נאמו כאן אנשי הימין ודיברו על הקסאמים שיעופו מכאן ולשם. אני אומר לכם, מי שרוצה היום לחוס לא רק על שדרות אלא גם על אשקלון, על שתיהן, צריך להבין אם לא נצא מרצועת עזה בתוך שנתיים, שלוש, אולי שנה, הטווח יגיע לאשקלון. Now, so what I think is actually really interesting about that before you start is we saw people from the left and the right there. We saw Likud, we saw Meretz. I, I think it's scary stuff. It just shows uh, how misleading uh, the idea was and how misled the Israeli public was. One of the sign bites that you didn't show was Arik Sharon saying how he firmly believes this and how this will break through boycotts and how this will bring uh, people far and wide uh, to, to uh, embrace Israel. I mean, you know, you know the, the, Israeli, the Israeli public has been led astray grossly by its leadership over what's, what's going on in Gaza. And, you know, I think I said one of the previous programs, uh, it was Einstein who once said that you can't solve mm -hmm. a problem with the level of thinking that created it. And what created the problem of Gaza was trying to force self-determination on the, on the Gazans. And that must stop. It's obviously after a quarter of a century of blood and destruction, of trauma and tragedy. You know, someone has to, has to you know, we say, well, you know, the penny has dropped, and we have to think uh, of alternative paradigms. 
So is this why, you know, at, at what point do you believe the Likud kind of shifted? Was it after the disengagement and they saw how wrong they were? Well, you, you know, it depends what you mean by the Likud. I mean, Arik Sharon basically rammed us down the Likud's throat. If you remember, he did a referendum within the Likud which, and he promised to accept the results. And the referendum within the Likud was uh, against the disengagement and he ignored that. He railroaded it and went to the Knesset. Mm -hmm. I think many people in the Knesset uh, voted for it because they were afraid of losing their positions and they sort of you know, put their, their, their political positions before their principles. Uh, I don't think anyone really believed it would work, but they were afraid of, of crossing uh, Sharon. All right, well, uh, I think at, at the very least we can say that, you know, political expediency was certainly not in service of the country's defense. Uh, thank you so much for coming in, Dr. Sherman. Thank you.